station. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston, this is station. We are ready for the event. KCTV TV, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is KCTV TV. How do you hear me? We have you loud and clear. How about us? Yep, we hear you. Um, before we get started, well, thank you, ladies. Uh, I just want to make sure uh, we are saying your names correctly. So if you could start off by saying your names. Sure. Uh, my name is Laurel O'Hara. And I'm Jasmine Morbelli. Well, we're going to talk to you both, but Laurel, obviously, being that we are a Kansas City station, uh, we're going to have a, a lot of questions for you. So first, let's get right into it. You know, I, I understand you dreamed of becoming an astronaut since elementary school. What was it about space that in, intrigued you at a very young age? Yeah, I just from the time that I was really young, I was always really interested in exploration and I dreamed of um, being an explorer like in the old fashioned sense, um, exploring new lands. And I always just really enjoyed um, new places and new experiences. Growing up in Houston, I had NASA right down the road. And so I think that was a that played a big role in why I set my sights early on on becoming an astronaut. Yeah, and, and I know you got your master's at Purdue, but you you got your undergrad you, you got your undergraduate degree at KU, two thousand five. Talk about how talk about your time at KU and and how that prepared you for the career you have today. Yeah, KU was really the start of it all. Um, I decided to go to Kansas partially because um, I had not been to Kansas before and hadn't spent a lot of time in the Midwest. And I went up there the summer before starting college and visited Lawrence and visited the aerospace engineering department and just fell in love with the department and also the town. It just felt like a really good fit. Um, and then from there, it just took off. I had an amazing time, lots of good memories, um, late nights in the aerospace de design lab with my class as a junior and a senior. And um, I also rode there on Kansas Crew, and so that was a really big part of my life there as well. Yeah, no, and and, and if you could talk about also, uh, you know, I, I understand or I saw or read that you did a lot of uh, focused deep sea research before uh, joining NASA. Um, how did that experience give you a better understanding of what it's like to be in space, or, or did it? Um, yeah, it definitely did. Um, I think a lot of the work that I did at Woods Hole, uh, where I was doing ocean engineering, uh, directly played into the experiences that I've gotten to have at NASA, um, especially the work that I did going out on research vessels at sea, because uh, working on a research vessel at sea is str very strangely similar to working on space station. In both cases, you're in a relatively remote environment, so you only have um, the tools and the equipment that you have on board your ship at hand to be able to solve problems and fix problems, fix things. Um, and then you're also just working as part of a relatively small operational team. Um, and then you have a bigger team back on shore, back on the ground, um, helping you. And so just getting that hands-on experience, um, both technically and then also working in small teams um, has definitely helped me on board Space Station. Yeah, you've been up there for three months. Jasmine, I know you've been up there a month longer. Uh, both of you, it's your first trip. Um, describe uh, what that moment you first saw Earth from space. You both can answer, but Laurel, maybe you answer first. You both or, Station, your mic is off. Um, it's hard to describe that moment, um, but I remember it very vividly. Like all of launch day was amazing. Um, just the entire day from the time I woke up to the time I went to bed on space station. 
Um, but the the first moment I saw Earth was kind of unexpected, actually. Uh, we had just gotten into orbit. I was, you know, floating a pencil in front of my face, and we were doing all the checks of the spacecraft um, that we needed to do uh, once we got to orbit. And uh, my our left seater, our, my pilot's window, um, it, you could kind of see Earth coming in, but mine was just pitch black. So for a while, I didn't look out the window. And then a little bit later, I looked out, and suddenly it was just like Earth in my face. Um, as far as I could see, just these brilliant blues and browns and greens and whites. And uh, it was just one of the most beautiful things I'd ever seen. And uh, for me, um, from my seat uh, inside the Dragon, I couldn't really see out the windows well. And I remember once we got into orbit, you know, I felt like I was hanging upside down uh, in my seat restraints and letting some of the others get, get out of their seats first and t had to take care of a, a few things beforehand. And then consciously being like, OK, I want to I want to unstrap, feel what floating feels like and then uh, take a look out the window. So it was very conscious for, for me uh, going to take my first look out the window. And it's just one of those things you can't describe. I mean, part of me was nervous. I've looked forward to this for so long that I was like, what if I look out there and I'm not that impressed? But uh, that's n nothing to fear because it's just spectacular looking, looking back at our planet. It's, uh, it's so incredibly beautiful. Yeah, I can imagine. Um, it, you know, for you guys both, I, I was reading, did you both graduate from NASA's astronaut candidate program at the same time? And if so, what was it like reuniting in space? Uh, we did. We were classmates. So we both started at NASA at the same time in August of 2017. And we spent the first two years doing our basic training together. And so, um, I mean, it's it's amazing being up here with JAWS. Like, it would be amazing being up here with any of our classmates because we're all so close and we've done so much together and just been through so many different experiences together already that now getting to share this experience on board Space Station um, has just been incredible. Yeah, Jess, what, what did you say? What, just how add did you react that. when you saw So I'll add that um, initially, Laurel and I were only supposed to overlap for a little bit up here um, for about a month or so. And Laurel ended up sliding to where we've, we've overlapped almost our entire missions. And I felt a little bad, but I was like, Laurel, I'm, I'm sorry you're delayed, but I'm actually really excited we're going to be up there together. As Laurel said, uh, our entire class is extremely close. Uh, and flying with any one of my classmates would have been awesome. But uh, it's, been, it's been super fun being up here with Laurel. Yeah, let's talk about that um, spacewalk that you all took back on November 1st. I understand it was the fourth all-female spacewalk in history. Walk us through that. What was that like? Um, well, there's, yeah, there's a lot. I, like, doing your face, first spacewalk um, would be amazing in any, I mean, on any day. But it was especially like just as we were talking about, um, it was particularly special, I think, for both of us getting to go out the door together, um, just because, like I said, we'd, we'd already done all these things together um, and built this really strong relationship and just ability to work together. And so getting to go outside and do something like a spacewalk, which is one of the riskiest things that we do and kind of the just most demanding things that we do physically and mentally, um, and just the responsibility that we have for ourselves and for the equipment when we're out there um, and for each other as um, getting to do it with someone who's a close friend and has been there through all the ups and downs of the last seven years was really special. Yeah, talk about your duties up there. What are you guys doing? So we've been very, very busy up here. We actually just last week uh, sent uh, sent two cargo vehicles back, the SpaceX Cargo Dragon as well as a, a Cygnus. Um, and our prime 
prime mission up here is is science and technology demonstrations, um, and that spans such a, a wide gamut of different areas. Um, but as part of as part of just living and working up here, we also end up, you know, doing maintenance uh, on space station to keep things running, uh, to keep our life support systems going, uh, our communication systems, all that, and so. Uh, we also end up being the uh, research experiments ourselves um, because it's it's very important for us to study the effects of space on the human body, not just to, to help us go further, but but also a lot of that carries uh, has direct uh, carryover um, to back on Earth and studying aging and things like that impacts on our immune system. So, um, you know, we're also the experiments uh, as part of that. Yeah, how, uh, Laurel, how big of an adjustment was it uh, to live and work in microgravity? Your hair is uh, really funny, though, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It's just floating. <laughs> it's one of our favorite things and also one of our least favorite things up here is <laughs> our hair. Um, yeah, the adjustment was is is actually like one of my favorite parts about getting to space station because uh, when you get on board space station, it's super disorienting at first. Uh, when we train on Earth, uh, the grant the deck or floor is always the floor, and the ceiling's always the ceiling, and the walls are always the walls. But then you get up here, and anything can be a ceiling or a wall, and so. Um, at first, you can come around a corner on space station and have absolutely no idea where you are, like even what module you're in. Uh, but one of the fascinating things is just how quickly our brains adapt to that environment and you start to figure it out. And now, um, any of us, you could probably just drop us in any module in any orientation and we'd know exactly where we are. Yeah, what's your, um, what's your favorite part about being up in space? There's, we're looking at each other because there's so many. It's like, where do we start? <laughs> I'll, yeah, um, I mean, some of the big ones are just floating. Uh, we we talk and laugh on a daily basis, just like we thought it might get old at some point, and it definitely hasn't. Uh, it's still a lot of fun just to float through a module, kind of doing flips when you're on your way, you know, from one job to another. And I don't think that will ever get old. Uh, and we'll miss it definitely once we're back in Earth, living in gravity, um, in, nor in the normal world. Um, and then also just looking out on Earth, like no matter, um, sometimes I'll go to Cupola, uh, which is one of our uh, big windows looking down on Earth. Um, I'll go to Cupola with something that I wanna see um, that I've looked at ahead of time and to take pictures of but no matter whether i'm planning to go or i just pop in for a quick visit um, i always see something amazing that i didn't expect on earth um, and so just getting to see all of these different places on our planet some places i've been and some places i've never been um, has been memor very memorable yeah i'm gonna I, i'm gonna ask you guys to demonstrate and, I, and just to oh, go ahead jasmine Oh, no, I was just going to add, I, I second everything Laurel said, but one thing that I think um, was a, a surprise to me at how uh, amazed and how cool I, I think it is, is, is looking at the space station itself. Um, you know, I, I, I predicted looking back at Earth would probably be spectacular and, and floating I've dreamed of my entire life, but seeing the space station actually like in front of you and uh, the solar arrays and just every aspect of it in fine detail actually out in uh, in orbit is also something that's been incredibly cool to see. Yeah, um, some quick questions. We only have five more minutes with you guys. Um, what's your favorite, or wait, I already asked that. Coolest thing you've experienced while up there? Um, so I'd say like one of the coolest things we kind of already touched on, um, and that was doing our spacewalk, 
I think that will be a very memorable day. Uh, we also just got to celebrate the holidays in space, uh, which was really special and a lot of fun. We decorated Node 2 where we have our galley, um, our dining table, and had a little Christmas Eve party and a Christmas Day cookie decorating and feast together. So that was a lot of fun. Um, that So you guys are upside down. That doesn't hurt at all? It's not upside down to us. Now it's right side up. So that's the cool thing. You, w wherever you placed your head becomes the ceiling, and wherever you placed your feet becomes the new floor. It's it's really cool. That is wild. Um, how do you guys pass the time? Uh, we spend a lot of time working, so um, we have pretty busy days, but we do get time off on the weekends and in the evenings and usually we'll spend that in any combination of um, looking at earth just doing some earth gazing taking pho photographs like that was not something I really did on earth before I got up here but I've gotten really into it um, and then beyond that um, like I like to read and draw so I do that talk to friends and family back on earth um, and then also hang out with each other uh, we have a lot of fun up here together yeah what do you miss about earth if anything. <laughs> uh, so one thing I definitely miss, aside from the people, friends, family, I mean, uh, other than our crewmates here, everyone we know and love is back on Earth and, and, and real showers with running water. That's probably one of the things I miss most. I actually had a dream about taking a real shower the other night. So uh, that's that's what I would say. Is that the same for you, Laurel? Yeah, I miss seeing my friends and family, of course, and um, also just being, spending time in nature, um, getting to jump in the ocean or be in the woods or just feel weather, um, like feel sun or, well, we get to feel sun up here, but feel, you know, rain and wind and cold winter. Uh, watching winter fall over Earth has been one of my favorite things to see out the window lately. And I really miss, like, cold air and, and snow and being in the snow. Yeah, and you return, you're supposed to return back to Earth in March, right? What will you miss about the experience? Yeah, late March, there? early April. Uh, I. So many things, um, just like just getting to live up here and like spend time with the crew. You know, we kind of turn into our own little family up here. And um, so I think I'll just miss miss being here and like all the little daily things like just waking up and making coffee and you know, checking where we are over Earth and poking my head out the windows um, just to see, you know, what what's out there and just the little daily routines about life in space. Last question, um, for the little girls who might see this interview, what do you say to them if they aspire to one day be an astronaut? Um, I'd say whether you aspire to be an astronaut or whatever you aspire to be, um, I think if you're setting your sights high, um, you will face challenges and you will face failure, um, but if you stop at that, that's the end, right? You failed. But if you just keep going each time you fail, eventually you'll you'll get somewhere. And so uh, I think failure is really scary in the moment, but just keep going. And then the other thing I'll say is, um, you belong, and we need you. Uh, we need you in these spaces. Laurel, you want to add anything before we let you guys demonstrate microgravity? Yeah, and I, what Josh says, said, said was great. Um, and I would just add um, to do figure out what you're passionate about and do that. Don't do what um, you think you should be doing or what others think you should be doing. Um, do what you want to do and do what you're passionate about. Um, and then just to add on to what Josh said, um, 
do things that challenge you and that feel a little bit risky um, because when you're doing the things that make you uncomfortable or feel um, like there's something at risk, that's when you have the most growth and the most learning um, from those kinds of experiences, the ones that are a little bit scary and a little bit uncomfortable. Great. Well, thank you both ladies for talking with us today. I, I, I Mission Control is probably going to cut us off, but I'd love to see you guys do a little do a little something so we can see what it's like up there. Cartwheels or flips or something. <laughs> Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you to all the participants from KCTV Station. We are now resuming operational audio communications. <laughs>